How do you really talk to an investor about investing in notes? Stay tuned. Well, if you're somebody looking to raise some money, you are going to want to pay attention today. I want to welcome you to Note School TV. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to be here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. So make sure you're joining us. And the easiest way to do that is simply by start by liking these videos, subscribe to the channel. And if you really want to participate, make sure you're clicking the bell notification. It'll turn your notifications on. You will be notified. It'll give you a little alert on your phone or on your device uh, that tells you, hey, we're going live that notifies you to jump on uh, engage with us bring your questions ooh and ah i'm sure right and just uh, and kind of participate and learn with us today we've got an awesome show but if you're trying to figure out really what it is we're even talking about even what notes are what note school is all about you can learn a little bit more by going to note school tv I'm sorry, noteschool.com slash tv to learn a little bit more get engaged and, and kind of take that next step Today we do have a special guest, but a couple things first is going to be number one, make sure you're sticking around until the end. After the show, we're going to have a little bit of an after party. We hang around afterwards, chat with the guests a little bit more, answer a lot of your questions that you bring up, that you type into the, the comment box there during the show, and uh, we'll try to do our absolute best to give you as much value as we possibly can. And before we get uh, too far down the road, let's start by talking about the news. How you doing? You know what? I am wonderful, and uh, things just keep getting better on the news front here. We've got some stories that are hot off the press, so okay. we'll just jump right into them, bud. Do it. All right. Housing Wire. As of yesterday, March 23rd, delinquency rates rise for the first time in nine months, right? So delinquency rates on uh, mortgages in the United States had kind of, they were kind of tinkering down just a tad and boom in February, which is the latest month for reporting, uh, popped up to 6%. So that is up from like 5.85 to 6%. I know that it's just a tad raise, but guys, here's the thing. What that means at 6% is that there is about 3 million, uh, almost 3.1 million delinquent loans uh, out there at this point. Add to that the 2.5 million loans that are in uh, forbearance, and we've still got a pile and we've still got a ways to go. Second up, another Housing Wire article from yesterday. Home sales plunge 18.2%, but demand stays strong. New home sales 8.2% higher than a year ago. How can that be, right? Well, it's because the demand is crazy, and as the demand gets uh, as the demand gets more crazy, the number of houses on the market gets smaller, right? It says after nearly a decade uh, high in January, new home sales for single-family homes plummeted eight to 18 point or 18.2 to an annually adjusted rate of 775,000 in February, the sharpest month over month decline since 2013. So again, things are hot, hot, hot on that side. Isn't it crazy with the, with the way things are uh, on the first slide, the first story is that, wow, you know, delinquencies, but home sales are crazy. And then finally this morning, Home flipping hits a four-year low. This is uh, this is an M report uh, story from a couple of days ago, and it says uh, the 2020 U.S. home flipping report from Adam Data Solutions found that 241,630 single-family homes and condos in the United States were flipped in 2020. Uh, that is down 13.1 percent year over year for 2019. And the story ends up with the 2020 ROI was off more than 10% uh, or 10 percentage point from peaks of the past decade. So guys, um, 
less houses, more competition, and then on the other side, the ugly truth of the uh, delinquencies. That is the news for today. Eddie, any comments on any of these? Well, we're obviously in a hot real estate market. Uh, we are we are continuing to monitor both loans and forbearance and loans that are delinquent. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if if listings are down, mm -hmm. what do they say? One point four million realtors compared to a million properties listed. That's wild. <laughs> How's that work, Brian? <laughs> That's a tough math problem. <laughs> sort of. Somebody's not going to get a check, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So those are things that I think the alternatives that we continue to talk about are ways to find a crease in the market, right? We can find out where the competitive things are. Where is there a underserved area of the market? And that's what we're always trying to focus yeah, on. That's what we're yep. always doing for sure. Yep. And and I think right now in today's marketplace, there's a couple of really big opportunities for those who are obviously paying attention. And so um, I think today we've got a special guest and we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. All right. So who do we got today, Joe? Well, so we have our friend and esteemed uh, note school investor and uh, a friend of ours, Mr. Richard Thornton, all the way from the Bay Area in San Francisco, California. Good morning, Richard. Morning. How are you guys? We're great, Richard. Glad you're here. Good. Glad to be here. Great and absolutely excited to have you here this morning. And and uh, you've got a you've got a great story, Richard. I mean, you have. Uh, yeah, we we appreciate your story, and uh, I'm going to kind of run some run a few slides in the background, and I'll be in the background. I'm going to let Eddie uh, talk. We'll, we'll talk a few minutes, okay? That's great. Whatever you'd like, Joe. Okay, very good. So, Richard, I think that one thing that's interesting about your story is is you were in another segment of real estate, which was commercial real estate lending, right? And you kind of made a, a definitive choice to kind of move away from that for your own kind of private wealth building. You were able, you guys were able to sell your company and do well. Congratulations. Thanks. And uh, now you're on the next horizon, which is the wealth building strategy for yourself. And uh, I know that you, Martha was on uh, last week, right? Mm -hmm. right. And uh, you know, Martha very well, you and you and her have, collaborated a lot about your strategies. And uh, so I know that uh, I know that you are fully aware of how she does some things and her likewise. And we just thought it would be really cool to kind of do a one, two punch and have you on today. And Martha essentially told a good story last week about how she got started with her dad teaching her this stuff. How did you, what, what, what made you focus on wealth, Richard? <laughs> Retirement. <laughs> well, I mean, you, um, you know that most real estate people today are focused on transactional income and not growing that growing their wealth at the same pace. Yeah. Right? So uh, one of the things I really uh, like about the note business in general is I came from a very regulated uh, environment, uh, very cookie cutter environment. And um, as you know, notes are anything but that private notes. Uh, and I like that. I like the fact that um, you're helping people, the fact that uh, you can be creative in a lot of things that you're doing uh, and basically chart your own path. And so that's exciting for me. That's great. Well, you have done really good with it and you particularly have become very successful at raising private capital. And you and I use the expression, the burnout landlord, right? Because we found that a lot of people found that the rental business was a lot more of a job than it was just an investment. And uh, they tend to do really well with you. Tell me about your typical investor. What, what, what is he? What's his story? Uh, my typical investor um, or my avatar, as we're uh, taught to say, uh, is somebody who's 50 and over, somebody who has a combined uh, family income of 200 plus and probably has about that much money uh, to invest uh, in addition to whatever else they have in their self-directed IRA or their 401k or, or whatever. So he's got 200,000 in dry personal cash, plus some, probably some more money in a retirement account. Correct. And he isn't buying the next rental. 
No, uh, he's not. Um, he's he's not. Uh, I, I can. Uh, some of them have rentals. Um, I I will say that uh, with my current marketing campaigns, I've been surprised to find how many people want to convert from rentals to notes. Well, they they want to move from uh, a part time job to be in the bank. Right. Right. Let's look at it. Let's look, uh, Joe, pull up some slides for us, if you will. Let's, let's just do, go through a quick case study. And I want to ask you, Richard, like your kind of your thought process, like how, when you're, when you're looking at these deals, what are you looking for? And so tell, tell us about this deal. Okay. This is a little deal that I found in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, nice, clean little neighborhood, a little house, as you can see. Uh, the value on it's about seventy six thousand, and I knew I could um, get the note on it for about half of that. Uh, when I looked at it, um, I had a nice long pay history uh, on it. So as you can see there, the loan balance was thirty seven thousand. Um, I also liked the terms. Since most of what my practice is is selling parcels. I like to sell the front end of the mortgage, um, usually around ten years and keep as much of the back end as I possibly can. And that's really where I make my profit on a lot of my deals. And All so, right, so Richard, you live in the Bay Area in California, and you, but you're buying an asset is, that's located in Ohio. Why right. are you okay with that? I'm okay with that because the margins are better uh, and the deals are more bite-sized. So I looked at um, a note about a month ago. Uh, it's out here in California. Uh, it was an $800,000 note, and uh, the person had a private mortgage on it. And you say, well, why does somebody who has an $800,000 mortgage need a private note? Uh, he was a tech guy, and he's from India. And he could not qualify, even though he had plenty of income, could not qualify for a mortgage. His mortgage rate was 6%, and I would buy it for 5 And that's not something that's A, of that size, and B, of that rate. It's really remarkable. So I get better margins in the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, this is nice looking house. Yeah, it's, it's a nice clean looking, house. right? Nice clean looking little house. You know, mom and dad live there and have got um, uh, very nice jobs. Uh, I could get a, a decent tail out of it, and I could still give my investor uh, a nice secure return. Now, most of my investors want to be completely passive. Uh, they want to be set it and forget it. So that's that's what I focus on. I sell home notes and uh, and other things too. But this is the the basis of my practice. All right. So the payment is $348 a month. And we can see there that there has been literally, is that correct? 94 payments made? That's right. So I had a nice long pay history on this. They've been playing like clockwork for all that time. And that to me is always the biggest factor is, is what my payment history is. Yeah. So you so so you're looking at their propensity to pay, their likelihood of paying and you're going, I can measure a lot of that looking forward based on 94 years of looking back, right? Or exactly. 94 months. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, That's they've been- like eight years. I'm sorry? That's eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'd been very reputable up to this point. And I mean, you know, they'd had a, a few hiccups here and there like we all do, but nothing more than like 60 days late and then they made it up. So that sounds good to me. 350 a month, 348 a month is their payment. That's their house payment. Right. That's not their cable bill. No, that's just their their principal insur insurance. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> their P&I payments, and that's what comes to me or the investor. I think Martha's cable bill is three forty eight a month. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as busy as as Martha is, I can't say that uh, she's watching much TV though. So I yeah. should reconsider that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about risk here. Let's talk about risk in the deal. How much how much money you have in it? compared to what the collateral is worth. Tell us about that, Richard. Okay, well, uh, when I buy any note, I don't care if I'm gonna broker it or whatever, I always assume that I'm gonna own it because um, A, A it's, it's safer, uh, investors like to hear that, and that's one of my selling points. Uh, but B, sometimes I do, sometimes it, uh, everybody's got different criteria. What I liked about this is I had a great pay history. Uh, I had a nice little community that's very stable uh, and growing. Uh, obviously, the collateral has been taken care of, and I'm at 42% of property uh, value. Um, those are that's a good cushion and um, a good assurance that they're going to continue to pay. 
All right. So let's compare that to another investment. How do you see this and this buying this note and having 31 eight into it? But the but the collateral, the underlying collateral, the house, you know, you don't own the house. You just own the mortgage on the house. Right. How would you compare that to some other investment? Well, I don't know of any other investment that I can uh, invest in uh, stock market annuities or anything like that and have three or four ways to get my money back if uh, for, for some reason the payment stream fails. Uh, and that's what I always look for. I want to make sure I have at least three exits on any, any property. So in this instance, I could foreclose and sell the property. Uh, I could rent it out. The rent is more than double um, in this neighborhood of what the mortgage payments are. As a matter of fact, I think it's almost triple. Uh, and I could also um, sell it to a, a another note holder who likes to buy um, non-performing notes uh, because they think that they'd like to take care of that that upside. So that's those are three very strong factors to me. Yeah, and and you just don't have you just don't have the dollars in this deal. If you owned it as a rental, you've got all the dollars invested in it, right? Right, you've got all the dollars invested in it, and and then. Uh, by the time you um, get your rent, uh, even though it's three times what your payments are here, you've got to take out all your expenses, your insurance and everything else. Uh, and you've got to deal with all that. On a, that's, that, that's the three T's, toilets, tenants and trash. You have to deal with all that. And buying a note, we don't have to do with that. They, you know, That's not your problem. One thing I like about a note is that you are the bank you're secured by the property. In this analogy, you were very secured by the property, more than twice the property value of compared to what you invested in the note. And then a note means that you basically are receiving a cash flow of payments. And so this little time bar here shows that $348 a month over the life of the note, right? 266 months, you bought it for 31. You did a pretty innovative strategy here, Richard. You bought the whole cash flow. Right. I bought the whole, ca whole cash flow. And what my goal is in every partial I sell is um, I try to uh, cash out and put just a little bit of money in my, my current pocket. Um, I My whole strategy uh, is to roll my portfolio three times a year if I can. So let's say I have... One fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I want to buy a note on January first. Be out of it in ninety days, um, and, and have a partial done. Uh, roll that over, buy another one, and buy another one. I'm not always successful at that. that. Quite quite often, I only get to do two a year. But you can see if you have um, you know six or seven hundred thousand dollars, what whatever it is that you might have in your your self directed IRA, and you keep rolling this over, you're building a very nice annuity for yourself. So figuratively speaking, Richard, you bought the whole pizza. I bought the whole pizza. I sold part of the pizza and I made a profit, uh, albeit small. I sold this. I bought it for $31,815. I sold it for thirty-four. So I put $3,000 in my pocket, nothing to brag about and certainly nothing to live off of. We should all um, be cognizant of the fact that we can't live off of selling partials. You have to have a day job. You have to have some other form of income if you want to have a solely uh, partial uh, selling um, practice. But you made three thousand. But you own the back ten years of this note. I do. In addition to the three thousand you already made. That's that's correct. Joe calculated your yield on there. It's in the little green box there. Mm -hmm. Joe's very good at very high. You know, you, you, you get exact numbers and he gets a little bit fuzzy, but very high is a good way for him to look at it. Uh, yeah, it is a very high yield. Mm -hmm. You know what I say? It's enough. It's enough. That's right. It's yeah. enough. Now, so, even so, the question I quite often get from investors is, well, or fellow students is they say, well, what if he pays off early? Okay. I still have a, a margin in there uh, where I would get some more money. Um, uh, off the unpaid balance that wasn't paid. But if even if he pays off, um, I don't know, uh, after four payments, that's four payments that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. 
Yeah. And just I don't want to get too wrapped around the axle and a lot of numbers today, but there is a there is a process that note school goes through and shows people how to calculate that. And it's a solid number. It's a it's a it's a, it's a good number. You if it paid off, let's just say in a couple of years, you probably would make about 10 grand. Mm -hmm. So you would have made three thousand up front. You wouldn't have gotten all the money because it did pay off early but you would have still gotten a, probably another 10 grand and that's a, that's a solid deal. And, and the residual factor in this and the wealth building factor in this is huge. If I took, if I looked at your math there and you said, I want to do this three times a year, you've made $9,000 on your money up front. And if that, if that math held true, the 48,000 at the end, you've made almost $150,000 in future wealth. Yes. Um, on a, 50, on a $35,000 investment. Yes. I, I don't want to hold myself up as, as typical, Eddie, but I would say that I, I more than covered the cost of my tuition for note school in the first year. <laughs> well, I, I would say that math yeah. and a little bit more, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is, this is a strategy that we teach. This isn't all that we teach. There's other things that we can do and there's ways to make a little more money up front. But this was a heck of a good strategy. And you could have gone into the, just the rental, regular rental property business, right? I could have. Yeah. I mean, uh, after we sold my company, I, I had a whole lot of ways to go. But, um, you know, when we sold the company, we had 70 people to, to manage and I was sort of done with that. And so this was a very good um, path for me to, to go. So I learned this, as you know, from my father-in-law and I didn't sell a company with 70 people. I was living in a 10 by 40 mobile home. <laughs> True story. Right. Yeah. So right. you can kind of do this from any perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do it when you, when you're at a stage where you're, where you want to work part time and you're trying to grow wealth and uh, you can still make transactional money as you showed. So that's really, um, it, so in, anything else about investors? What do they commonly tell you? Why do they, why do they like this? They like this because of the security of the transaction. They, they, um, they also like it because I'm somewhat of an uh, asset manager for free, uh, meaning that they know that I'm, I'm not getting really paid until the end of the transaction and when they're uh, paid off. And so that's very valuable to them. That's, that's a huge selling point. Um, they typically don't know that I make a little bit of money up front, but even if they did, it's insignificant in, uh, when you look at the entire deal. Uh, it, what's my, my biggest concern is after they've been paid off. Uh, and that means a lot to them. Look, it's a, it's a lot less work than a rental and they can sleep at night seemingly better. Right. 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 Joe. So, you know, Richard, here's the, here's my take on this being in the back and getting to hear this and knowing you and knowing your business. You're not just using $35,000, right? I mean, you, you're, you're doing as many of these deals as you can possibly deal, but just understand for people that do just have $35,000, they can take that strategy and turn that and what, you know, Eddie termed here, a few months ago, and we laugh about it, the capital recoupment plan, right? That's what your turns are all about. You know, you turn that money over and over and over. And then uh, we have a friend of ours that says, I'll take 10, right? <laughs> so again, you know, those are the deals that you just hit on a daily basis. You know, you knock them out of the, you know, I, I call it knocking them out of the park. They're not home runs to most people, but you know, it's just the consistent level of doing this. Talk about that, you know, just a minute and and kind of ha what that means to you. And then and then um, some best advice you can give some new investors out there that are coming into the fold. OK, well, I'd say that you don't have to have a lot of money to do this. As you just indicated, if you can pull together enough money to buy a note from friends and family, uh, you can buy your first note, roll it over, and then take a few profits, maybe give them your, the upfront money, but keep the back for yourself, or there's a lot of different ways to, to slice it. Um, what I would tell people is uh, to get a website, get yourself known. Uh, if you want to sell 
uh, whole notes, which is a good way to start to generate upfront income, is just broker notes. Um, go to Notes Direct or wherever and buy some notes uh, and sell them to different uh, individuals. That way you can get some good current income. Uh, you get to know the business um, and what's important. And therefore, you can move forward and then you can move into to partials. So that would be the number one thing. The number two thing is start building content on the web. So get a YouTube channel, um, brand it. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel for American Note Capital, you can see I've got about 21 videos up there uh, and I'm adding to them every month. And uh, people like that. They want to know that you know what you're talking about. And that's... Um, a huge marketing tool. That's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, if you do, you have. I'm thinking have... they might want to go to Notes Call too. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, yeah, and and Richard, what I you know what I hear you saying is is there's there is certainly more than than one way to make money, and we do. We talk about making money today for those that want to just, they need eating money is what we call it at note school, but then there's, you know, some people want to make money today like you're doing, and then they've got money down the road, right? So, you know, one of our favorite sayings at note school is it's your chalk and your chalkboard, and as you come in, and this is one of the strategies that I know you love and, and I love, and, you know, as, as Eddie and I have talked about, I mean, Eddie started in 1980, I started in 1990, and I did buy and sell all the note for 20 years before Eddie said, why in the heck are you doing that? Why don't you keep some of those back ends, right? So uh, sell some partials. So, you know, it's, 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 all about, it's all about the knowledge for sure. Right. All right, we better bring Brian on and bring it up. Richard, you're going to stay with us for the after party for a little bit. We may have some questions that we can get into there. I hope we can. Uh, so, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, it looks like it cut you off a little bit, but uh, but absolutely, we appreciate Richard. And one of the things that he said that I love too is is he really differentiated between profit versus yield or return, right? And he said, yeah, I'm making some profit, but really, as you saw from a wealth perspective, um, he's using this model to really grow some wealth. And obviously, that's uh, that's what a lot of us are after, right? We want to know that uh, we've got some security and a solid plan moving forward that we're actually going to reach our wealth. And so obviously, we appreciate Richard. He's going to hang around. But before we get too far uh, down the road here, I want to at least mention our, spin uh, our sponsor, uh, because Note School TV is sponsored by Notes Direct and the Feeding Frenzy Friday. Yeah, the Feeding Frenzy Friday is a playlist that we have of content videos that we're creating where each week we are going to break down a note that's on Notes Direct. It's simply content that's going to help you better understand how to break down the details of note, the pros and the cons, and help create you into a master of due diligence and really make sure you've got that confidence to go out and make sure you're buying some notes. So if you want to see uh, some of the playlists and some of the, the previous videos, go to noteschool.com slash FFF for Feeding Frenzy Friday and check that out. Next week, we have our one and only Eddie Speed as he's going to do the monthly um, note industry update. And he's going to bring some really relevant content to kind of better inform you about what's going on in today's marketplace, specifically today. Uh, and obviously next week as well, we will be live just like we are every single Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. We go live uh, and we'd love to engage with you. And again, if this video is is valuable to you, you got some, some value out of this, like the video. It does a lot for us. Uh, it means a lot to us as well. Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. And if you're wanting to, to comment and, and be notified, or maybe you are watching this in the future and you say, man, I wish I could have said this thing. Man, turn those notifications on by clicking that bell and you'll be notified when we go live so that you can jump on just like everybody else. Um, maybe you're new and you're trying to figure out what that next step is for you. You can always go to noteschool.com slash TV to learn a little bit more about notes and note school and really what we teach. Um, I saw a comment right here from Mrs. 
uh, Procket67. Looks like you're trying to enroll in uh, in our Golden Notes class um, this weekend, and you're getting an area. It's because the class is full, so it's not an option anymore. What I would encourage you to do um, is you could actually go to um, noteschool.com. Uh, slash virtual gold and register for our next class, right? And as long as there's going to be spots available there, we'll get you into that class. Absolutely. So uh, if you're somebody who's just, I need help right now. I, I need, uh, I've got this burning desire to either succeed in my real estate business, or I need some help to be able to accomplish this next thing in a specific situation. And you just need help right away, man. I would encourage you to go to noteschool.com and simply click on the contact tab and just reach out. There's a phone number there. There's an email there. Uh, we'll do our absolute best to get you the best information we can get you on the right path so that you can succeed just like Richard's doing every single day. We're going to stick around here as we move forward to this uh, to this after party. If this is an awesome show and you loved it, man, make sure you're uh, going checking out previous episodes of, uh, of Note School TV. For those of you uh, who can't stick around, we'll see you next week. And for those of you who want to hang around for the after party, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Well, we are back in the after party here, and it's always nice to not just have Richard, but we've got all kinds of people on here. Um, yeah. Albert, thanks for the great content, man. I, I thanks for saying that. We really appreciate you joining, um, Albert, and um, and participating. And Ryan, uh, Ryan and Jenny, it's great to hear from you all as well. And so uh, we've got a lot of people on, and uh, we'll kind of go through some questions. But I thought I would kind of kick things off by looking at some of the content, Richard, and people want to better understand this avatar thing you mentioned at the beginning. Like, why did you create this avatar? I know you said that you, you've, you've note school is the one that kind of trained you in how to, to figure out who that is, but why is this uh, avatar the way it is? How did you come up with that? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, it was hmm, the lowest hanging fruit in a way uh, in that, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and I was of that um, uh, category. So it was uh, people that I could uh, deal with. Um, I have to say that I've had to spread it a little bit more or increase it, Brian, um, the more I've gone online. And but what does that mean? Uh, that means that the income requirements uh, have stayed the same in the savings requirements, but the crowd's becoming younger. I'm getting more and more 35 and 40 year old investors uh, who are just calling me because they see my stuff on YouTube uh, and they have, they, they come to me educated, which I think is, yeah. is interested. Um, yeah. And one of the things that's really fascinating about that comment is there's a whole new group of investors who just got an education in what owning a, a rental property is really like. And this burnout landlord uh, category that we've been talking about for months now um, is just, it's that perfect person that's going to fit that avatar, right? And so our, our audience is actually growing as, well, as this situation develops in our country, right? Joe, were you going to say something? Yeah. yeah well, I was, go ahead, Joe. Sorry, Richard, you go ahead. What I was just going to say is one of the things I like to ask people in a nice way is, is how long did it take you to determine that your passive income wasn't? <laughs> in other words, it wasn't passive. You were doing a lot of work to generate that income from your rental. So go ahead, Joe. Well, and, and you know, um, I hope everybody got the, the point of all of this. So Richard buys a note for $31,000. He sells a piece of it and makes $3,000 in today money. But and he's got all of his money back, right? He's got every dime of his money back, three thousand dollars in his pocket. Then he has one hundred and twenty six payments, uh, almost twelve years out, that he has zero dollars in of three hundred and forty eight dollars a month. That you know that in itself is amazing, and um, I just want to make sure everybody got that. And uh, our good friend Melvin is on uh, today with us as well. He's a good friend of you. Uh, Brand new note school uh, student, Mel. <laughs> yeah. And and there's another comment from Ken George. And, and I want Eddie to answer this because I know how Eddie's going to say it. And I just love to hear it. But Eddie, Ken wants to know, do you have to have a mortgage license? Uh, yeah. So it, it, 
if, if I'm going to buy a note, if I'm going to buy a note and sell a note, now I'm not saying that I'm going to broker a note or flip a note. Richard's in the state of California. And if you do more than eight a year, you are going to need a license to flip notes and make fee income. But if you're going to buy and resell, uh, well, Brian, I've got a driver's license and a fishing license, but I don't have a note reselling license. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, the first time I heard you answer that question, you said you need a driver's license, a hunting license, and a fishing license. And these last two are optional. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I got to be politically correct. I do have a hunting license, by the way. Yeah. yeah but, uh, I love that. I love that. And and obviously, we've even got people chiming in the comments as well, even answering the questions uh, for us as well. Bumbling B. Homestead even says, note school is worth every penny if you want to learn how to do note investing. That's awesome, um, obviously, to hear. Uh, and uh, and that's, I mean, that that's a... It's very encouraging, right, to, to have you jump on here. Um, another question here, man, they're coming in so fast here. Out of all the marketing sites, uh, as far as uh, how you're doing your marketing, how are you generating these leads? You know, what are what are some uh, what, are, what what are some marketing pieces that you could speak to? So, Albert, I think that's one of the interesting things that I have have learned, which is I'm not really using any marketing sites. I've got uh, uh, I've got somebody who posts for me on YouTube, Facebook, uh, and other social media every week, matter th three times a week. Uh, but the biggest thing um, is to have my own um, channel for American Note Capital uh, on YouTube and have content up there and to keep adding it and to put all the tags in there and the keywords. And as you do that, people will find you because there's a, a program called Keywords uh, Everywhere. And you can download that for free. And there's a very simple process that you can go through. Uh, where you can locate what the keywords are. You put those as tags in your videos. And then when people search for those, they find you and your videos show up. So they're actually educated by the time they, they come to me, which is makes my sales process much easier. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to have a YouTube channel. Uh, and so that's something I would recommend to people. Yeah, absolutely. And and even Wayne Garrett's on here saying that your website encouraged him to go out and take action, right? Create his own website. Exactly what you're talking about. Put put in those uh, little steps that are actually going to create huge leaps in your business. Um, Aldo's also saying, uh, you know, this partial selling strategy and then rolling over the investment capital over and over is brilliant. It's the burr strategy of the note business. Eddie, you know, this thing you're teaching, it might be a thing. It might, it might be a real thing. Uh, I like it. Although, yes. That's what I'm wanting you to get the picture of. Is uh, this is the, the real the, the, this business is rinse and repeat. Uh, that you know that's what Richard's doing. He's rinse and repeating, and and so people think you got to have a zillion dollars to be in this business. You have to have a zillion dollar idea, yep. right, Richard? Yeah. You don't have a zillion dollars. You just have to have a zillion dollar idea. We get paid the most in this business to be creative. Yeah. Right. To figure out the pieces of the puzzle. And it's that's that's one of the things I was trying to convey earlier, which is in my commercial business, the commercial business is, is fun and can be very profitable, but there's not a lot of flexibility in this. And as you well know, there's a gazillion ways to solve one of the problems that come before us. And I like that. I like that juggling. And I like that flexibility. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of investors, no matter how they got into the, the real estate space, we all really want the same thing, right? We want the good pieces, right? The cash flow, the return on investment, but we want to take away the bad. And a lot of people just don't understand, or they maybe they haven't been introduced to uh, kind of what Eddie teaches in the fact that with notes, you can keep the good. And in fact, with what you're doing with partials, Richard, you get really, really good, right? But mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with a lot of the risks that can come with the tenants and the toilets and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and so it becomes this perfect storm that uh, really allows the investor to say, man, this is, when I got into real estate, I thought I wanted this thing, but really what I wanted was essentially what notes are, which is allowing you to keep the good pieces and pull away the bad. And that is, uh, man, that's that's a really, really big deal. 
And by the way, Brian, uh, for our uh, the, the nice lady that uh, was talking about the class, our next class is April 15th, 16th, and 17th. So okay. check it out. That, that is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, by the way. We okay. know that. So <laughs> That's Brian, awesome. why don't you, uh, why don't we wrap it up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a show. You got it. You got it. Well, Richard, hey, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. It's always good to see you. And I love uh, kind of you sharing your experience. It's going to be encouraging to a lot of the other note investors. Eddie and Joe, it's always a pleasure. Glad to see you here. We'll see you two next Wednesday as we jump back onto Note School TV and try to bring you note investors the best content we possibly can. If you missed the show, make sure you go ahead and leave us a comment anyway. We're definitely going to follow up on these comments. If you're on Facebook or YouTube or something else, uh, drop a line to us. We'd love to connect with you, even if you missed the show. Otherwise, we'll see everybody next Wednesday on the other side. Great. Thanks, Brian. Eddie. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Joe.